So here's the story of how I went from living paycheck to paycheck to living off the dividends for my investment portfolio. So I grew up in what most people would consider lower middle class. I lived with my single parent mother and my younger brother. I didn't have a lot of things, but there was food on the table and the bills were mostly always paid. So even when I was younger, I could see the power that money bring. But also I didn't think about it a lot. I did have part-time jobs when I was at school and university, but my real change in attitude came after I started working full-time. So I'd moved to Sydney and I was living by myself and juggling bills. And although I'd studied journalism at uni, I never actually worked in the journalism field, although I did love writing. So the first few years, I was pretty much like everyone living paycheck to paycheck. I'd always assumed that working hard and saving was the way that you made money. But since that was not happening for me, I figured that there was something that I was missing. So maybe I needed a second income. I wrote some freelance articles for some magazines at the time and they brought in a few extra hundred dollars, but this was still not making me wealthy. It took me another year or so before I got really curious. I wanted to know how people who were not born into wealth, how they got financially independent or more wealthy than they are. So I started reading about millionaires, about billionaires, about real estate investing, stock market investing, building businesses. I came away with these two main things that rich people seem to understand that most of us did. First, they weren't just saving, they were buying income producing assets. So instead of putting their money into a savings account, they were buying things that created more income for them. So they understood the power of leverage. And secondly, they understood the power of compound interest, not only in savings accounts, but in things like the stock market. Time is limited, it goes by so fast. All of these books reiterated the fact that you don't get rich by trading your time for money, like a job. You get rich by growing your money over time, particularly in places that compound your money. So after reading all of this, I chose the stock market because I'm not gonna lie here, I thought it was the laziest way to make money. Property investing seemed kind of like a headache because you have to deal with repairs and upgrades and tenants. Business seemed like a lot of hard work and honestly, I just didn't know what business I would go into. But the stock market was like shopping, shopping for companies. And since I love shopping, it seemed like the perfect match. So I saved up my first $1,000 and I put it into the stock market. Then I kind of found it fun. I saved up another thousand dollars and put that into the stock market. And I kept doing that. In the beginning, I was buying a whole host of different companies. Uh, sometimes I would put it back into the same company if I thought it was doing well, but mostly I was buying different companies. In the beginning, I made a lot of mistakes as well, as we all do when we start investing. I really didn't have a strategy. I was kind of just buying what websites were recommending to me at the time. There was a time I lost nearly $1,000 on a company. It just went completely bad after I had already purchased it within a few months. This is the time when I heard about the strategy called penny stocks, which we didn't really have in Australia, but we did have cheap stocks. And the idea was that you could double your money really quickly because the stock only had to go up a few cents. But it's also a very fast way to lose money as well that they don't tell you. So after about a year and a half into my investing journey and I was teaching myself a lot and learning a lot more, I started to get really interested in the strategies of Warren Buffett. It was his long-term value investing formula that I felt felt more comfortable to me than most of the other strategies I was learning about. It's just seemed really simple and stable. So I came up with a list of rules based on that uh, that would fit the Australian market. And that's what I used primarily for most of my investing from that point on. So those rules are in my book, Shopping for Shares, but pretty much it came down to looking for companies with high return on equity and high profitability but were undervalued, so to speak. Now, I wasn't a dividend investor then, that came later. I actually didn't even know it was a thing then. But anyway, my portfolio was starting to grow. So after about five or six years, my portfolio had reached a few hundred thousand dollars, which was incredible to me at the time. Now, during this time, I was working full time, so I was using that money primarily. I did also have a few passive income sources. I was writing books, so I was getting the royalties from that. And I did a little bit of affiliate marketing at the time. I don't do that anymore. But anyway, after about six years, I quit full-time work and left to have kids. So I wasn't working from that time on. I was still receiving income from book royalties and all the little side hustles I was doing at the time, but it wasn't a great amount. I did still put things like my tax return into the stock market, but pretty much the stock market was a set and forget at this stage. So I guess I wasn't really doing anything now except just being patient and letting it grow because time really took over here. So many people get caught up in the day-to-day -day fluctuations of the stock market and they might put some money in and then in two or three months it goes down and they start to panic. But it really is a long game. So my portfolio, I don't think I did anything special. It was just time in the market. And yes, I put a lot of money in in the beginning. I was working full time and I was probably pretty frugal at the time. I wasn't spending a lot of money. I wasn't going out a lot. I even didn't go on a holiday with my friends to New Zealand at the time because I wanted to save that money and put it into the stock market. 
So yeah, I was probably not much fun at this particular time, but that's what I did. So I switched over to dividend investing about five or six years ago. So yes, I did use a growth strategy in the beginning, but that's mostly because that's all I knew. I wasn't really familiar with dividend investing then. I'd heard about it, but I hadn't really considered it as a viable option. Although looking back and knowing what I know now, I kind of wish I did start with dividend investing because reinvesting the dividend is a really fast way of growth and probably a more stable way is if you're just buying for growth, you're relying so much on that price increasing. And that's only going to really happen if you've got a well diversified portfolio, because I found over the years that no matter how good my research has been, there's always been a few companies that did really well. Most companies just were stable or grew really slowly and a few did fail. This is why ETF investors are so wise because they don't see all this. They see the growth as a whole, as the diversified portfolio. They don't see the individual companies that fail or the ones that do well. They just see the overall growth. Although I still love single stocks, they're my first love. So right now the majority of my income comes from dividends. It pays my bills, my rent, my lifestyle. I also do have money coming in from this YouTube channel. So I usually make around five, six hundred dollars a month from this, which is great for a few extra lemon drop martinis. And I was thinking about writing something new soon. I've got the itch to write again. I miss it. I haven't done that for a long time. And mostly I want to do it just because I miss writing, but also the income will be nice as well. So that's my story of how I became financially independent. I hope this has been inspiring or educational, or you've just enjoyed it overall. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.